Let's welcome stage Carol Zabar. Okay, this is a story about a red ponytail. I was born a flame red baby, and throughout my childhood, red hair was my definition. I walked down the street and people said, little girl, you have the most beautiful hair. The teachers called on me. It was wonderful. I was the attention, I got attention everywhere. I loved it, I absolutely loved it. My friends didn't like it all that much. <laughs> they, did, they kind of basked in the shadows. It actually didn't last very long. It lasted, I would say, till I was 12 or 13. When I was 13, I started dating. And I had this long, long, long red ponytail and I thought it made me look like a baby. So when I was 15, I cut it off. I went to the beauty parlor, and they cut it off, they put it in a scrunchie, and they gave me the ponytail. And it was great. I thought I looked sophisticated, I looked older, and I loved this ponytail. I kept it in my room, I would look at it every once in a while. <laughs> When I was 17, my father died suddenly. I was 17, I had a 14-year-old brother and a seven-year-old brother, and two years later, I left for Israel, and I stayed there for five years, and I took my ponytail with me. <laughs> and from time to time, I would look at this ponytail, and it would remind me of my childhood. I would identify with it. I would hold it to my hair and see if my hair was still the same color. I finally returned to the States. I went home for a very brief time. My mother and I didn't get along all that well, you could imagine. Child absconds to Israel for five years. I got married, had three kids. My mother married at the same time she remarried and she moved to South Africa. So she would come visit us every two years and she would play with the kids and she and my husband didn't get along all that well, but the visits were okay. On one of her last visits, after she left, I went to the medicine cabinet where I kept my ponytail and it was gone. And I knew right away my mom had taken it. So I called her and I said, Ma, did, did you take my ponytail? <laughs> and she said, yeah. I said, yeah? What's yeah? She said, look, I knew if I asked you for it, you'd never give it to me. And I wanted something that would remind me of you. So while it was flattering, I really wasn't all that happy about it. And I said, listen, Mom, you know, maybe we could have a borrowing arrangement. And she said, we'll talk about it. So that actually didn't happen. And my mother actually started to do badly as well as my stepfather. And I didn't see them for a while. I went to law school when I was 49, and that first summer, we got a call from my brother and I from our stepsisters and brothers in South Africa that we should come see them, and we did. And they were both really doing poorly. My mother was drinking a lot. My stepfather was fairly demented. And the whole time I was there, I thought about mentioning the ponytail, <laughs> but it just... It just didn't seem like the right thing to do. So I didn't do it. And I went back to the States. He died a few years later. And, and I said to my mom, come on, let me get you. Let me bring you back to the States. And by that time, she was really too old and too and too used to her life, and she couldn't do it. And I said, well, come on, I'll go down, I'll visit you. She said, no, no, I really don't want to see anybody. So that visit 
when I was in law school was the last time I saw her before she died, two days before the Twin Towers. So my mom died, and my ponytail died, I guess, with her. I have no idea where it went. I never got to tell her the good things that I felt toward her. I never got to tell her that it was really okay that she had taken my ponytail. If it meant that much to her, it was really great that she had it. And what I was left with was, I guess, what everybody's left with, was the memories of my mother and the memories of this ponytail which was my childhood is this adorable little red-headed child running around. And that's what stayed with me, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you. Thank you.